Hello, and welcome back to the How to Fly series. In today's part, part two, we'll be discussing configurations, approach, and landing. Now, because of that, the field is just behind us. Now, what are configurations, you may ask? Simply, landing gear and flaps. Now, in this aircraft, the landing gear, the wheels, cannot be retracted, as opposed to large, long-haul aircraft, or other more advanced aircraft. But the flaps can be retracted and extended, you see. This surface here, just close to the ailerons, on the other side as well. Now, what do these do? They increase lift, so that you can fly safely without stalling at slow speeds, slow, slower than would be without the flaps extended or clean configuration. Now, what's so important then, you may ask? When the flaps are extended, the lift changes, the plane pitches up, and not only that, the flaps create a lot of drag, so you need to add a lot of power with the flaps extended. So, with that being said, we will need to practice. Now, let us head back into the flight deck for a moment. You can see on the right, there's a wing flap indicator. Now, you have 10 settings, about 10 settings on this aircraft, but um, the relevant setting that we'll be using for landing is flaps 4 or flaps 60. Now, with that being said, with maximum flaps, you have plenty of drag. But so let us start flying and let us start extending the flaps little by little. And also take note that the flaps must be extended below about 80 miles per hour. We do not use flaps as brakes, we use them as high lift devices. Although that's for regular flying. In other scenarios, may be but limited use. But in normal flying, we use them as high lift devices. Okay, so let us fly level for a moment. Level the aircraft, fly below 80 miles per hour. Okay, so let us start with the first notch of flaps. Press the flaps down button once. Not much change. So let us extend the flaps to about 40 degrees. As you can see, the plane pitches up automatically and a massive reduction in speed. Now, this aircraft, the flaps, are... The flaps create more drag than they do lift to the feeling of the pilot. So, the adaptation that the pilot would have to do is more throttle, but also to take note the climb rate, the climbing of the aircraft. So speed check below 80, let's go flaps for 60 degrees. Now mind the speed, push down a little and more throttle, mind the speed. Okay, now feel free to practice with the extending of the flaps and retraction as well, so let's go flaps track the flaps to about 30, you lose lift, okay, not that much, but the drag is mostly gone, now let's go flaps up, okay, it's a bit of lift lost, but a lot less drag, so in this aircraft, it's not lift you have to deal with most of the time, it's drag, so be sure of that, okay, so let us, so once you're done practicing, let us check our speed below 80 and go flaps full, ready to approach the airport. Okay, speed check, flaps full. Throttle. And let us keep our speed for final approach about 50 to 60 miles per hour. So at this time, it will be a great idea to start practicing controlling your speed quite precisely for approach and landing because 
the more precisely you can control your speed, the more chances there are for a successful landing. So let us turn back. The island is just 180 degrees. Okay, so with the flaps, there is a lot more drag. So for level flight, we will have to use somewhere near full power. And also, do not fly above about 80 miles per hour for precaution, as the flaps can be overstressed beyond a certain speed that the aircraft recommends. So, as you can see, the runway, the runway is just straight ahead, but you can see that the runway, let's pause for a moment, the runway is, you can see quite a lot of the runway. It looks as if you're looking onto a table. It's, this is an indication that you are too high. Now, this runway does not have a papi light system, which means you cannot rely on the lights to see if you're too high or too low. You have to use your eyes purely. So, this is an indication that we're too high. So we need to descend. Now, we need to maintain a constant speed here. And to make sure that this, that we are on a steady descent path, a three degree descent path, we have to maintain about 300 feet per minute vertical speed down. So in order to be able to get on that path, since we're too high, in order to be on an appropriate descent path, we need to descend more than 300. So let us go 700 vertical, vertical speed, feet per minute, somewhere along the lines of that. And you can see, now let me just descend more on that. You can see that the side picture of the runway changes. The runway is quite, is flattening quite quickly. Let me just send a bit more for dramatic effect. It's becoming less of a table and becoming more of a road ahead. Now you see the runway side picture is flattening, flattening, flattening. Now this is an indication that you are, the approach angle is changing. You are becoming lower. But now let me stop the descent and start climbing. You can see the opposite effect. Now it's, the side picture is getting steeper. You can see the runway becoming more becoming more of a bird's eye view. See, it's getting less flatter, less flatter. You're getting too high now. You're becoming way too high. Now, let's continue our descent. Okay, side picture getting flatter, but appropriately, we, we will not descend quite too hard, especially when we are 500 feet above the runway which on the altimeter here is at 1,000 feet, or zero. Now, the runway side picture is getting flatter, but we're still too high, quite very high. Now, we'll soon be able to catch on to the, the, uh, the proper approach angle soon. Now, we're getting better now. Also, take note that we have to be landing at past the first third of the runway due to the runway markings, due to what the airport wants. So, I'll be guiding you for that as well. Now, the runway, the side picture is getting a lot nicer now. we on the proper approach angle shortly. And before we land, let's make sure that we have the proper flap set up, flap 60. Okay, as a very minimal basic checklist for now. Okay, this is now the appropriate side picture for landing. So let's maintain about 300 feet per minute on the descent rate. Or a completely visual way of landing is just to make sure that the, the runway isn't 
flattening more than what it is or becoming less flat, becoming more of a bird's eye view. Basically keep the same side picture. Now with the uh, black line here on this aircraft, it makes it very difficult to fly in a straight line for approach. So you have to have a little bit of an offset, which is quite a pain, it must be said, especially for someone starting. So we have to overcome this difficulty by just flying a little bit offset and then making the turn once we're on very short fine, once we're just above the runway. Okay, now let's make sure that the side picture doesn't change. So if I nose up, the, side, the runway is, side picture changes. Not very dramatically at first, but soon you realize that it's changing. Now with uh, descent rates too steep, when one reflattens rather quickly. So let's find an appropriate balance about here, purely visual. Now let's maintain this steady approach all the way to above the runway. Now, with this in mind, a good landing begins with a good approach, so feel free to practice just the approach phase for as long as you like until you're really confident and you're flying a rock solid approach. Then we can begin the landing. And also keep a steady, steady speed. But wait! If you're seeing what I'm seeing now, there's a bus on the runway. Ideally, in a normal, fl normal flight situation, in a safe manner, we will not land. So what do we do now? We have to do something called a go-round, which means full power, nose up gently, and climb. Basically, basically what a go-round is, is a takeoff mid-air, aborting the, la the landing, going around, getting away from the danger below. So, we do not land, because first is it, it is unsafe, it's a runway incursion. For normal situations, we will not take that risk at all. So, we go around when the approach has failed, or the situation gets too dangerous. Or basically the aircraft is too out of control for landing, but still in enough control to be able to go around. So. Basically, any time it's unsafe to land, it's an approach too steep, an approach too shallow, other vehicles, other planes on the runway, or any situation where the pilot is not confident that he or she will be able to make a good landing, a good and safe landing. Okay, so with that out of the way, we'll circle around for another approach, and not to mention, we need to delete the bus. I still have my spare vehicle down there, just in case. Okay, so with the go-round, make sure your power is full, and also, once you're at safe altitude, retract the flaps. Safe speed, speed check. Speed is okay, do not fly below 39 knots with the flaps extended. So the speed 39 knots is the stall speed. So we need to fly faster than 39 knots, sorry, excuse me, not 39 knots, 39 miles per hour to be able to prevent ourselves from stalling at flaps full. Now with the flaps retracted, we go back on the throttle, reduce the climb rate and we need to fly around, so make sure we do not hit those mountains and start a turn, probably about 20 degrees of bank. And we'll come around once again. We need to have a rather long final, which means the final section, the final approach section means the section where the aircraft is pointing towards the runway. For the ease of the approach, let's have a rather long final. So take out, take your time to be able to fly this long final and we'll come around once more for the approach and landing. Also, please feel free to practice the approach for as much as you like. As I've stated before, a good landing begins with a good approach. So we 
before we land, let us have some... Let us have a discussion on what's about to happen. So, with a good approach, you finally come over the runway. You, you finally fly over the runway. And the descent will be steady. Now, if with the descent rate over the runway, being constant, you hit the ground quite hard, so what you need to do above the runway is you need to do something called a flare, which means to gently pull up to be able to reduce the descent rate, reduce how fast the plane is descending, reduce that speed. So what happens is that once you're about 50 feet above the runway, don't look at the altimeter, just use your eyes and I'll guide you for that back on the stick, on the elevator, pull back some more throttle idle, and touch down. So the landing I'll be demonstrating to you is not an incredibly smooth landing, but a rather standard by the book landing, so that you'll be able to get used to that before you attempt an incredibly smooth landing. So, before we begin our approach, let us reduce our altitude to 1,300 feet. So, on the altimeter, short needle to number three, long needle to zero. Now, this altimeter, long needle measures in 10, and short needle measures in 100. So, we know that it's 1,300 because the when we're on the ground, it's 500 feet. So, little short needle number three, long needle number zero. Let us descend to that altitude first. And then, for, for ease of flying, extend the flaps before final approach. It's not very fuel efficient to do so, but it is a very conservative and it's a very conservative way of flying and it allows plenty of time to get ready and to get adapted to the situation before we begin the critical phase of approach and landing. Speed checks, flaps full. Make sure you mind the speed, throttle. Okay, now yeah, the power is right. Airfield is just behind us. Make a left turn. Let's maintain about 1,300 feet. No need to be precise for now. Make sure that we maintain quite an appropriate altitude. And also, do not fly below 39 knots. Keep your speed about about 50 to 60 would be good assurance to prevent us from stalling. Also, during approach and landing, especially the final, especially the short final phase, be aware of the stall. Mind your speed, really mind your speed at that time. The biggest danger from stalling comes when you're close to the ground. Okay, so, 
but it's just to that 10 o'clock. It's also when you are not lined up with the runway, do not fly straight to the runway. Fly offset to the right first, then turn to the runway once you are quite about aligned. Otherwise, if you fly, if I point my nose to the runway right now, the time that I'll be aligned, when I'm aligned to the runway, will be the time that I'm already over the threshold, which is not good enough for good approach. Okay, gently begin the turn quite about now. Okay, so flaps are set to full, so we are, basically we are configured to land for now. And we slide below just for now. How do you know you're too high or too low if you're not used to a sight picture? Is that constant speed about 50 60 miles per hour, 300 feet per minute is separate and the sight picture doesn't change? Okay, let's begin the descent. Okay, so as it stands, we're slightly high, so just a little bit more on the descent. So we need to approach offset because of the black line. We need to make a rather quick turn just before coming over the threshold. But you have to use your you have to use your, the vision on the ten and the two o'clock of the aircraft to be able to guide you. angle looks good, descent rate is good, speed is all right. Just getting a bit too low here, so fly about level, just reduce the descent rate and begin again. This will really help us. And also make gentle corrections. The same concept with correcting for the big errors, then gently correcting for the small errors definitely will apply on approach. Now, let's say your speed is too high, let's say. Now, when your speed is too high, the plane climbs, so correct by using the throttle giving more descent rate than normal, getting back on path, gently being up the throttle, and gently pulling back. Okay, now, runway straight ahead and in sight. Now we'll be landing over the piano key markings, or the road crossing markings, as you can see the first row of them. It's called the runway threshold marking for the proper posh aviation language. Runway is clear. No buses, no vehicles, no anything on the runway at this time. So continue. Okay, so keep the center line. Let this look 10 to 12 o'clock. Okay, getting ready to flare now. You flare when the runway quickly expands. Now, not yet. Not yet. Gets ready. Gets ready, quickly expands, now flare, gently, okay, and let the airplane come down, gently flare, gently bring the thrust to idle, flare, okay, we have landed. Now, push down so that the tail doesn't smash 
onto the runway. Okay. Now, the landing successful. Rollout phase. Now we can exit through that taxiway exit over there. Just bring the thrusters up gently and use the rudder to turn. Let's leave the runway before another plane comes along. Okay, so that's it. Tiny complete. Feel free to practice for as much as you like until you get the hang of it. It boils down to practice most of the time, and it is incredibly important that a good approach be established, be made first. Hope you enjoyed, and see you for the next part. Thank you.